Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget what me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. Tell me, how can I forget what you've done for me? How can I forget how you set me free? How can I forget how you brought me out. How can I forget? No, never. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. Tell me, how can I forget what you've done for me? How can I forget how you set me free. How can I forget how you brought me out? How can I forget? No, never. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Certainly that's a true song, a sentiment of my heart, and I hope it's a true sentiment of your heart that we shall not forget how he set us free. We should never forget how he has brought us out, and we should never forget how good he is to each and every one of us. As we would often say, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, there's no telling where we would be. And we thank him. And we praise him for his goodness and his mercy, his love and his kindness that he has shown toward us. And we give God all the praise and all the thanks. So as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, uh, we certainly want to remember men and women and children everywhere that the Lord will continue to save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. And we certainly do thank God and praise God for all of you coming out tonight and those that are tuning in with us even on this very hour, and we ask you to, to share, share uh, this broadcast with your family and your friends and your loved ones and, and even your enemies. Share it, just share it. They, they need to hear the word of God too. Maybe they'll treat you better. <laughs> so we want, we, want God to, we want God to be glorified and magnified uh, with us. Amen. So we certainly do want you to uh, pray one for another and pray uh, for our Bible study on today. Uh, remember those that are bereaved and those that are going through in their bodies and in their spirit. Amen. And that we'll draw nigh to God. Amen. We need to draw nigh unto the Lord. No matter uh, what stage of life you're in, uh, whether you're young, middle-aged, or old, it uh, doesn't matter. Uh, the Lord is one size fits all. And everybody, he says, uh, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, uh, and I will give thee rest. No matter where you are in your life, you, you need some rest. You need peace. Jesus said, I was thinking about that scripture this morning. Uh, Jesus said, I'll keep thee in perfect peace, 
whose mind is stayed on me. And he said, my peace I give I unto you, not as the world uh, give it. The world, uh, you know, they, they may offer you some type of peace, but it's not the same peace that the Lord gives. In fact, Jesus said in the world, you're going to have tribulation. You're going to have turmoil. You're going to have trouble. Amen. But he said, in me, you're going to have peace. So let us go before the Lord and uh, in prayer and remember uh, those that need the Lord. Amen. Um, Friday night, we were teaching about the centurion soldier who had a servant that was sick of the palsy, that was paralyzed. And he sought out Jesus to heal his servant. And uh, the Lord healed the man's servant. And uh, the one thing that I got out of that that sticks with me in my mind is the power of prayer. We can pray for others and the Lord will move on them and to deliver them and to help them, to heal them. Won't he do it? Yes. yes. Somebody prayed us in. Don't fool yourself. <laughs> Somebody had us on their mind and took the time and prayed for us. So we thank God for prayer. The Bible says the prayers of the righteous availeth much, and we're going to go before the Lord in our prayers. Um, uh, let us pray for the success of the service on tonight, that something be said or done to encourage us, to inspire our hearts. And I believe that we have a word from the Lord on tonight. So let us pray that the Lord will grant the door of utterance, and if we be open, uh, when I mean that, when I say we have an open mind and an open spirit, the Lord will feed us on tonight. Amen. The Lord, uh, the Bible talks about, I got to move on. <laughs> but the Bible talks about how Jesus, when he went to a certain city, he couldn't do many miracles because of their unbelief. Amen. But if we, if we believe the Lord tonight, he'll, he'll do some miracles. He'll do some signs. He'll do some wonders. He'll open up our understanding. Amen. Hallelujah. But he can do mighty works. If we just believe. So we certainly want to go before the Lord in prayer. And uh, once again, just remembering uh, men and women and children everywhere. And remember our Bible study and our pastor on tonight, our teacher, that the Lord will grant the door of utterance. Amen. Let the church stand. I got you, Sister Chris. I saw you about to sit down. <laughs> Let the church stand. Uh, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we certainly do thank you and praise you for your grace, your mercy, your love, and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come together as we have uh, blessed your holy name and given you grace and given you glory and honor on tonight. We ask you, Lord, that you continue to strengthen us and help us as we endeavor to keep the unity of the peace in the bonds of perfection. We ask you, Lord, that you bless each and every soul that is under the sound of our voice and those that are in virtual land. We ask even, Lord, that you bless as we come together, Lord, uh, with one mind and one spirit. Put us on one accord. And, Lord, we ask you to send forth your word, send forth your anointing and your grace. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. We certainly praise God, as I said once again, and we want to welcome you uh, to another round of Bible study. And um, the Lord had, had pressed on my heart uh, to teach something different on today um, and uh, concerning um, uh, our mind. I want to talk about uh, the carnal mind uh, versus the spiritual mind. We'll, if the Lord say the same, we'll get back on um, uh, spiritual warfare on next week. Um, and the Lord let me know this has everything also to do with spiritual warfare, but the Lord has a concern, and um, he was pressing it on my heart, and I'm sure that if uh, people were to search out other messages from other pastors uh, that are being led by the Spirit of God, they'd have the same message, amen, because God uh, doesn't leave himself without a witness, and we thank God that, 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 that the Spirit of God dwells in this place and the anointing of God is free in our atmosphere. I want you to turn with me to the book of, of Romans, uh, chapter number eight. Romans chapter number eight. And um, as we have come through and have uh, on the uh, 
hopefully we're on the outer side or the other side of this great pandemic that uh, we've experienced over a year and a half. Um, you know, it, 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 it has done some things to uh, certain people and it has, it has literally, um, uh, how can I say it, it has affected all of us. And if you say you have not been affected by it, um, then that's just simply not true. Everybody has been affected by it. And, um, uh, and the Lord is, is, is concerned about his church uh, moving forward and, and coming out of this with the, the right mind and with the right spirit and with the right attitude. God is always concerned about your attitude. Amen. He's always concerned about your spirit and, and your connection with him, the anointing. He's always concerned about that. And um, as we um, uh, get ready to go into our study on today, there's some principal points that I want to uh, lay out. I want to lay out and, and tell you about before we even get started. You know, when a, when a person is connected to Jesus and, and born again of the water and the spirit have been rejuvenated, re, renewed in the spirit of their mind. There's, there's a certain uh, uh, quality, if you allow me to say, that goes along with that. And, and, and a couple of thoughts that the Lord laid on my heart. He said, a person who is in Christ, uh, they are literally a changed individual. That individual is not the same. The Bible says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, which literally means you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. And he said the old things, have, the old ways have been put to death. And then that we should also walk in the newness of life. So there's a change. Uh, anybody that, that, that is, uh, is confessing Jesus and continuing in the old lifestyle, they haven't changed. They haven't changed. And Paul, he literally is, is in Romans chapter number eight. He's literally talking about a believer and a non-believer. He's literally making that plain, a believer and a non-believer. You gotta ask yourself, am I a believer or a non-believer? If you are a believer, then you follow after the things of God. If you are a non-believer, then you don't follow after the things of God. All right? Let a man examine himself. And then the second point I want y'all to consider, you know, there should be a desire. Uh, once an individual has changed, there should be a desire to go after spiritual things. And, and be spiritually minded. There should be that desire that, that no longer I have a desire of worldly things or, or carnal things. And I'm going to explain all of this what I'm talking about. Uh, um, but there should be a desire after the things of God. The Bible says set your affections on things of, of, uh, on, on above where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God. Where is your affections? Where is your desires? Obviously, you hear at church tonight and you're tuned in to me, you got the right desire. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You got things that uh, uh, your focus is on heavenly things. And uh, the person, uh, when they get into the body of Christ, I'm just laying a foundation here, before we get into the scriptures. When they get into the body of Christ, they, they, there's a certain amount of freedom that comes along with that. And, and you have to, and we have to, and myself, have to walk in those freedoms. Uh, uh, oftentimes, we, we can have the mentality that, 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 yeah, I'm free, but I'm bound. But that's not the mentality of God. When God frees you, he has literally freed you, amen? And he expects you to walk in that liberty where with Christ have set you free. No longer should we be uh, uh, in the mindset, I can't, I, uh, uh, I have issues, I got problems. Uh, because when, when, when the Lord literally set you free, he dealt with your problems. 
He dealt with your issues and he gave you something to be not just a conqueror, but more than a conqueror. And we have to accept that type of uh, mentality. Amen. Accept that type of uh, mindset. Because if I'm always walking around in a defeated mindset, then the enemy will always get an advantage over me. And I will never be able to manifest the true purpose and the calling of God in my life. Amen. So you've got to resign to the fact that I'm in Christ. I'm free. Amen. Uh, I'm free from all of my addictions. I'm, I'm free from all of my, my, my inks. I'm free from all of my angst. I'm free from all of my fears. I'm free from everything that held me back. That has to be the mindset. Amen. That has to be the mindset. If that's not the mindset, you need to travail in Christ because, uh, until he is formed in you to gain that mindset. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You got to gain that mindset. I'm free in Christ because that's, that's, that's what he came to do. He came to liberate you. And if you say that you are not free in Jesus, then you're literally saying Jesus uh, uh, failed at his mission. Uh, he, 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 he's unable to do what, what he said he's, uh, he can do. And then you literally change the scope and the aspect of what God has said. <laughs> you follow me? You can't argue with God. If God said that if you're in Christ Jesus and you free, you free. Huh? And if and if and if Christ has made you free, who is he that can condemn you? Huh? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, it is he that has risen again. Amen. That's the mindset you gotta have. You gotta uh we gotta we gotta loose uh all all aspects of the mind wherein I'm no good. I, uh, I, I, I'm worthless, amen, and that, that I'm a slug, <laughs> uh, that, that, I'm, that, that I'm nobody, that, 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 that I'm not worthy in that respect. We got to let that go, amen? Hallelujah, my God, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And then uh, the other aspect, I hope y'all writing these things down because it's, it's necessary. I want to put these in your psyche, put this in your mind. The next one is, uh, um, when you get into Christ, uh, you have to have a desire to work. Amen. People that are in Christ Jesus and don't have a desire to work, then that's a problem. Amen. Because God has, has called you to a purpose. He has called you to a calling. Amen. And, and you have to uh, figure out what that calling and purpose is by seeking the Lord. And if, and if you spend your time doing other things as opposed to seeking after, Lord, what would you have me to do? And, and Lord, give me a mind to work and labor and have a zeal for the Lord. Then there's something wrong. Amen. Uh, if you're in Christ, you should have a zeal for the Lord. Uh, if you in, when somebody talk about Jesus, it should make you happy. Amen. And then you should be saying, Lord, what can I do for your kingdom? Uh, Lord, what is my purpose? What is my calling? Amen. And, and that should be that desire. Amen. It should that you should have that desire that goes along with you being in Christ Jesus, a zeal of the Lord, a zeal of the Lord, a zeal of the Lord. And that zeal is a zeal to work in the kingdom of God. Uh, Y'all with me? And then and then the last one. The, no, it ain't the last one. There's two more. <laughs> God, 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 God literally, uh, um, this is more or less a, a doctrine here. God literally provided for our atonement. Amen. He provided for our atonement or for our sins. You got to get that in your mind. That through Christ Jesus, God uh, has through Christ uh, provided for your atonement, for your sins. And the reason why I say that is, is because sins uh, and, and our remembrance of them have a, a way of weighing us down. And we have to remember that Christ paid for that atonement for our sins. Put that in your mind. And last but not least, um, uh, God, God literally, uh, and, and we'll get more to that in our teaching today. 
but God literally fulfills his righteousness in you when you are empowered by him. Now, the reason why I say that is this, is that you can't of yourself live a righteous and holy life. God has to empower you to live a holy and righteous life. And, and when you walk in God's empowerment, then you are righteous and holy. If you walk in your own strength, walk in your own will, walk in your own desires, there's no righteousness. Amen. Though you are trying to do good, though you give your body to be burned, though you feed all the hungry and eerie Pennsylvania throughout the world. But if you ain't doing it according to God's will, according to God's righteousness, it, it, it isn't counted as righteousness. God has to provide. God has to give you power. God has to give you the anointing. God has to, uh, 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 um, uh, how can I say it? God has to provide the means and the ways. Now, uh, if you just think about what I just said, if God is providing the means in the ways, then, then, you, then you ought to seek out God's provision. You ought to seek out God's ways. God says it in the Bible oftentimes that no one seeks after me. Uh, you got to seek after God. Seek ye the Lord. Why? While he may be found and do what? Call upon him while he is near. God wants to get the credit. God wants to get the glory, not you. Uh, thank you, Lord. Y'all understand me tonight? Uh, those are the mindsets that we have to have. Amen? All right. Thank you, Lord. Now, let's, let's look then in, in Romans chapter number 8. Thank you, Jesus. Romans chapter number 8. I hope y'all receive something out of those principles because it helps us to lay a good foundation uh, for our Bible study on tonight. Thank you, Lord. It says, there is Romans chapter number eight, verse number one, a very familiar passage of scripture. It says, there is therefore now, right now, at this moment, no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, notice, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now notice what it's saying. There is therefore now no condemnation. That condemnation there literally means that if you are in Christ, if you are born again, there is no condemnation. There is no guilt and, and, and penalty or punishment for sin. That Jesus took the guilt and the punishment of sin away from you and leaves you without condemnation. Y'all understand what I mean? Huh? Jesus paid the price and took away the, the pain of guilt huh? from, your, from your evil, see I'm about to say something, from your, from, from your evil wicked deeds, the things that, that you were doing that were sinful, transgressing God's laws. Huh? Jesus literally took the guilt away from that. Amen. Took the guilt away from that. And then he also took the penalty. Amen. Took the penalty and the punishment away from you that God was going to impose upon you because of those wicked deeds. All right. Now notice, he said, there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are what? Where? In Christ Jesus. This only applies to those that are in the body of Christ that are born again, born again believers. And, and, and let me connect this also because since we're here, because we oftentimes quote that scripture that says, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are be called according to his purpose. It only applies to the bowls that are in the body of Christ. It doesn't apply to those that are outside of the body of Christ. Because these whole scriptures here that Paul is teaching, that's in Romans as well. Romans uh, 1 and 28. Huh? It only applies to them. So people quote it haphazardly, quote it uh, 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 without uh, uh, regard to their position. Amen? Uh, you got to realize that 
all these things work together for your good if you maintain your position uh, in Christ Jesus uh, and don't walk after the flesh, but walk after the spirit. Amen. Y'all with me? Hallelujah. Now notice what he said. He said, he said, there is therefore now no condemnation, no guilt. That word condemnation means guilt and punishment or uh, uh, of sin. To them that are in Christ Jesus, because you're free now, who walk, that means that word walk there means to live, who walk not, uh, who walk not after the flesh or, or being carnal. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, being carnal in one's mind, but, but, but after the spirit, being spiritual in one's mind. Now, now notice what he said. Uh, remember I said that he's talking about a believer and a non-believer. A believer, a non-believer walks after the flesh, a carnal mind. A believer walks after the spirit, a spiritual mind. You may say, well, Pastor, that's, that's, that's elementary. A plus one plus one is two. Amen. But, but, but if you look at the lives of people, it gets complicated. Uh, you look at the decisions that people make and how they arrive at their decisions. It gets complicated. Amen. God wants you to choose him uh, 100% of the time, 100% of the time. If you're not choosing God 100% of the time, 100% of the time, you're wrong. You're not spiritual. Amen. You, you're not, 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 not. I'm going to say something controversial here. You know, see, a lot of people get fall into the trap to think that I can be spiritual 50% of the time and be carnal 50% of the time. Huh? That's a double-minded person. And the Bible says a double-minded person is unstable in all their ways. Get this concept in your mind. If you're going to be spiritual and spiritual-minded, you have to uh, 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 walk in God's spirit 24 hours a day, seven days a week uh, to, to order to be a believer. Uh, you got follow me? Thank you. I know I'm probably saying something y'all ain't probably never really thought about or, or, or say, well, I don't know. I got to think about that, Pastor. <laughs> uh, but think about it. Amen. Meditate on it. Ask God. Uh, thank you, Lord. That, 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 that he said in his word that, that if you are spiritual, then you are spiritual a hundred percent of the time. Uh, and people fall in the traps. Uh, and I'm going to explain uh, the difference between a carnal mind and a spiritual mind. Amen? Now, notice then, he says, <laughs> there's therefore now no condemnation, no guilt or shame or punishment to them that are in Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus in the body of Christ, uh, who walk, as how, how they live, not after the flesh, carnally, unbelieving, unbelievers walk after the flesh, but after the spirit. Spiritual people, believers, walk after the spirit. Uh, that's the whole change. That's why he gives you the Holy Ghost. Notice what he says. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, uh, when God, when an individual believes on Christ, they are literally then filled with the Holy Ghost. They're filled with God's Spirit. When they truly repent and believe on Christ, they are filled with God's Spirit. Amen? Uh, and, and, and what God did for me, he took me back. He took me back 30 years ago, when uh, probably 31 years ago, when when uh, when when he saved me. When I came to that Bible study that night, it was a Wednesday night, February 7, uh, uh, 1990. I came to a Bible class that night, and and I was in the throes of repentance, and I heard the Bible study. The altar call was made. Uh, uh, and I got up, I jumped up, 
And not a fact, I didn't just get up, I jumped up. <laughs> like, like someone was pulling me out. Jumped up, I got baptized, right? And, and, and that, that, that experience, it, it, I didn't know anything about the infilling of the Holy Ghost, but that through that experience of me repenting and getting baptized, I can honestly say that I was filled with the Holy Ghost that night. I can honestly say that. Huh? Did you speak in tongues? No, I didn't speak in tongues, but there was a change uh, in my spirit, a change in my soul, and I was anointed. I was anointed. I was anointed. And then I went back on that Thursday night, uh, uh, even before then, um, uh, I put all those do's and don'ts away from me. Uh, 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 did some things that were uh, 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 getting away from sin and unrighteousness. Thank you, Lord. Shedding off uh, things that were wicked that whole day. And my mind on Jesus filled with peace, joy, and love. And I went to, I went to prayer that night. And, and, and they said, well, you need the Holy Ghost. I said, well, if I need it, I want it, you know. But my point is, I believe that I was filled that night when I got baptized. Huh? And when I got down on my knees and they told me to pray and tear it, automatically, boom, boom, I started speaking in them unknown languages as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. The anointing huh, filled that whole place. Huh? I believe other people were rebaptized in the Holy Ghost. Uh, there was a, such a powerful anointing. There was such a powerful, my God, there was a, such a powerful peace, joy, and love. I lit up with, with, with a glow on my face. Hallelujah. And, and all I could do is say hallelujah and clap my hands and say thank you. See, that's a change. Amen. That's a change. That's a change. If, if you have experienced Christ, you should have gone through a change uh, to let you know that something happened. Uh, hey, you can't come to the Lord and not realize something happened. Uh, because that's the purpose of coming to him. You want something to happen. Uh, hey, shot. Something will happen. Amen. Uh, if you've got a broken spirit and a contrite heart, God said he will in no wise despise. Amen? Hallelujah. My God, I had so much joy, had so much peace. Uh, I, I, I was beside myself. Amen? Something happened. Thank you, Lord. My God, my God. Now, I remember, thank you, Lord. I was, I was, uh, 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 went to the, that, I've told y'all this before. I went to that Erie Plaza there. I said, well, I'm just going to have me one more good cry. This is after being filled with the Holy Ghost. I said, I'm going to have me one good, more good cry and I'm going to move on. Thank you, Lord. So I got in that car and I pulled over and I sat there and I tried to cry. <laughs> Stop, ain't it? <laughs> I tried to cry, my God. And the Holy Ghost just invaded that car and I started shouting. I started singing. I started laughing. I said, Lord, what is this? I put my car in drive and took off. Uh, I ain't been back to that position since. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, because there's something that happened. Amen. There's something that happened. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The, 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 the Spirit of God, amen, dwells in me. Uh, you have to make that same testimony that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Uh, and there's some evidence with that. Uh, there's got to be some evidence, not just your words. There has to be some evidence uh, uh, that, that the Spirit of God is in you. Uh, not, not, not just the feeling, but some, so some actions. Uh, your, your conversation, uh, your, your desire. Uh, everything should change. Amen. Your perspective uh, should change. Uh, you should be putting off and putting on. Uh, looking under you, you should have a desire to read your word. Uh, uh, Y'all with me? There should be a desire to read the word of God. Thank you. That's that change. Y'all with me? Hallelujah. My God. Now, notice. He said, for the law of the spirit of life. Now, notice. 
The Holy Ghost is the spirit of life. Huh? Carnal mindedness is the spirit of death. Huh? The spirit of life, which is the Holy Ghost, have made us free huh? from the law of sin and death. Now, what he's talking about here is that is that the Holy Ghost in you, it empowers you, but it also gives you life. Amen? It gives you spiritual or eternal life. Yes, That's the change. That's If you were to pinpoint a change, the change is Christ in you, the Spirit, the Holy Ghost in you that has reconnected you to life. Amen? Hallelujah. When, when a mother conceives... After a while, she want to feel the baby moving. Huh? That gives evidence of life. Huh? When, when, when the Holy Ghost gets in you, you want to have evidence of it moving huh? on the hip side. Hey, hallelujah. That, that's, that's a sign of life. Hallelujah. And if, and if, you know, I'm going to be honest. If I don't feel the Holy Ghost moving on a daily basis, I'm asking God, what's wrong? Huh? I, 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 I reconsecrate my mind. So I can, so I can feel it. It's addictive. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me, let me come back down the road. But this thing is addictive. Hallelujah. It's addictive. If you can read, you can connect so into Him, you feel like you're going to explode. You feel like you're going to bust. Hallelujah. Because you got so much in you. Amen. Hallelujah. This thing is real. Amen. This thing is real. It is, it's a change. Now, now, let me move on. Thank you, Lord. Notice, he said this, the, the law of the spirit of life in Christ, notice, have made me. See that word? Made me. It's a process. Amen? Christ makes you free. Amen? Christ makes you free. He, he, he makes you free. Follow me? You, that, the, look at that word, made me it, uh, and connected with a new man, a new woman. Amen? New, new creature, new creation. You got a makeover. Amen? Got a makeover. You, you used to be a slum apartment, uh, but he made you over and made you into a, 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 a Beverly Hills uh, 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 condo. <laughs> Hey, you follow me? You've been made over. Uh, he renovated you. Thank you, Lord. You follow me? He renovated your mind. That's what he really did. He renovated your mind uh, and renovated your spirit. You're in the same body, but 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 he renovated your mind and your spirit and gave you life. Amen. Makeover. Tell somebody makeover. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Now notice, he made you free from the law of sin and death. The, the law that Moses gave, it, it only uh, was, was, was there to bring about condemnation. It didn't, wasn't there to bring about life. Amen? Life comes through Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now notice, he made you free from the law of sin and death. So now no longer are you bound to uh, sinning and dying but you're bound to God through life that is in Christ Jesus you with me? now notice then he says for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and condemned sin in the flesh notice the law was righteous the law was holy but it lacked power to save. It lacked power to save. And that's what was the problem with the law, the Ten Commandments. Uh, it was righteous and holy, but it had no power. Uh, it had no anointing to save. So that's why he said, for what the law could not do, the, what the law could not save. Notice, he said, for what the law could not do, though it was weak through the flesh. Though you have the law, but in your body, in your flesh, uh, you could not fulfill it. It didn't give you power to fulfill it. Uh, thank you, Lord. That's why you can know the Ten Commandments 
but yet commit all kind of sin. You can't know Jesus and commit all kind of sin. Uh, Y'all don't hear me here today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You can't, you can't walk with Christ. Every sin that a man committed is without the body of Christ. You can't know Jesus and then walk in fornication, adultery, walk in lying and cheating and stealing and say, I know Jesus. Jesus is in me. Uh, because uh, 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 that's not true. Uh, because he gives you power to come out of that. Uh, that's the reason. He gives you the anointing uh, to break that yoke. Uh, 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 he gives you the anointing uh, to, to be free from bondage. All that, all that is bondage. Amen? But, but in him is life. He gives you the power, the anointing to go after the things that be of God. Hallelujah. If you're going after the things of God, then you got Jesus. If you're going after the things of the world, then you don't have Jesus. Amen? Y'all with me? Hallelujah. That's, 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 that's it. Thank you, Lord. That's it. That's, and then you got to examine yourself. Uh, what do you go after? Huh? What what are you desiring? Huh, Sister Jackie? So so when you say you follow the Holy Ghost, yes. you're supposed to be limited. So what do you believe has happened when that individual starts doing all kinds of stuff that's outside of God? They they they're walking in uh, carnality. They're walking in evil desires. And they stop going after godly desires. They become an unbeliever. Literally, in God's eyes. They become an unbeliever. No longer a believer, but an unbeliever. Because they've made choice to go after ungodly things. Oh, absolutely. The Holy Ghost warns. The Holy Ghost advises. Amen. The Holy Ghost tugs at the heart. That's the job of the Holy Ghost. Because its job is to lead you and guide you into all truth. It's a workhorse. Amen. So, so it's always tugging at you. Amen. Even I'm going to say this. Even when you're doing good uh, and living right, the Holy Ghost tugs at you for a little bit more. Huh? Thank God. It, it, it wants a little bit more out of it. Huh? Huh? Thank you, Lord. Because, because, because that's, that's the job of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. It, it, wants, it wants you to get 100%. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Never satisfied. Thank you, Jesus. It's a difference. And, and she hit the point, the nail right on the head. If, 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 if one is, is not desiring the things that be of God and you say that you are in Christ Jesus, there's a problem. There's a problem. That's, not, that's, that's what the Bible study is about. That, that, that we can deceive ourselves huh? to say that, well, you know, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm halfway you know, I'm, I'm doing stuff halfway, uh, but I'm giving God some of my time, but, but we're missing it. God, God, when he talks about, and we're going to get into it, when he talks about a carnal mind versus a spiritual mind, that he's talking about uh, what, are, what is your interest? What are your desires? Amen? Now, we are in the flesh, Right? Are we in the flesh? Huh? But the Bible says we don't war after the flesh. We're in fleshly bodies. But, but we're spiritual beings and, and, and fleshly bodies who should have a desire for God. That's where the carnality comes in. When your desires are not godly desires, it's a problem. It's going to cause you a problem. Because you fulfill your desires, whether they're godly or ungodly. You fulfill your desires. Uh, uh, Mr. Quinn, 
Bishop, that, that's, that's also saying about grieving the Holy Ghost. Yes. Once you grieve the Holy Ghost, yes. a, a child of God, they could be in danger. Seriously. Yes. You know, with that. Yeah, absolutely. And I change that, make it a little bit more stronger. They are in danger. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. What are you talking about? Grieving the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is sensitive. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. It's the Spirit of God. And, and, and the Holy Ghost may, uh, is intelligent. Uh, and, it, and it makes intercession for you. And when you turn your back on God and the things that be of God, it saddens the Holy Ghost to where it says it grieves it. Yeah. Me meaning that how, how when people hurt you, you cry and you feel hurt, uh, betrayed, uh, uh, sad. Magnify that a hundred times when you're dealing with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. How it feels. Amen. That notice, uh, you got, you, you've been trying to help somebody <laughs> for five, six years, trying to help them. And, and then they, and then they turn their back on you. Huh? They, they count you as a dog. Like you never had did nothing for them. Wouldn't that hurt you? Uh, you get, you raise up some children, right? And, and then when they get grown enough, they cuss you out. They tell you off. They walk out on you. Uh, say you ain't did a, 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 a thing for them. Uh, wouldn't that grieve you? Uh, so that's what happens when when people walk out on God, when they backslide, huh? when they turn their back on the Lord, it grieves them. Yes, sir. Amen? Amen? Thank you, Lord. All right, now, let's move on. Y'all with me? Okay, thank you. All right, what verse did I leave off with? Two, okay. All right, now I left off with three. It says, all right, so it says, for what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. All right, yeah, thank you, Holy Ghost. Okay, so what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, meaning that the law could not save. God sent his own son in the, in the likeness of sinful flesh, which, which that means is that that likeness means uh, a guise, or it means a uh, uh, Christ was in a, a, a earthen body. Literally what that means. Uh, doesn't mean that Jesus was sinful at all or committed sin. Meaning that he was just in an earthen vessel. Amen? Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. So notice, he sent him in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, for an offering. That's what that means. Jesus came for sin as a sin offering. Amen? Because the wages of sin is what? But the gift of God is what? Eternal life. Y'all with me? So Jesus came in this earthen vessel uh, to offer himself as an offering for you and I. A lamb that was slain. With me? Uh, uh, notice. He came God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. Notice, he condemned sin in the flesh. Meaning that he gained the victory over sin in his mortal body for you and I. That should be an end of it to those that are true believers. Huh? That Jesus gained the victory huh? over every sinful behavior. Huh? He was tempted in all points just like you are huh? yet without sin. Huh? And then when he died, he got up, he said, now all power huh, in heaven and earth has been given unto me. And Jesus gives you that same power. Huh? Through that Holy Ghost. You follow me? Yes, sir. When you receive the Holy Ghost, you receive power uh, to gain the victory over all sin. Yes. All sin. Everything. 
that is sinning. Mother Davis? I, I have a question. Go ahead. The, the question is uh, in the likeness of sinful flesh, talking uh, about Jesus. Yes. Meaning that Jesus was a man like any other man. Uh huh. If, if, yes, it would be accurate to say if you connect it to this, when you say he was just like any other man, meaning that that his body was just like you and I, is no, no different, no nothing, uh, no 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 change. But but in him, he was he's the son of God with power, uh, and that's what makes him different in that respect. Now. Uh, uh, he, he's the son of God with power. Now I'm going to connect what you just said. With free choice. Uh, with free choice. Now he could have chosen to sin. Uh, but, but he chose not to. Uh, because he knew the plan and the purpose for which God had called. Uh, same like guys with us. We can choose to sin, but we choose not to because we know the plan and the purpose God has for us. Yeah, we choose God. All right, all right, beautiful. Yes, Lord. That's beautiful. Ain't that beautiful? Yeah, amen. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, amen. Thank you, Lord. We got to choose God. Yes. Amen. Notice, when Jesus was in that garden, he said, Father, if there be any other way, let this cup be passed from him. Yes. He said, nevertheless, what? Not my will, huh? but what? That, that lets you know Jesus still had a will going on. Amen? Uh, he said he still has some desires going on. Yes, sir. You follow me? Now, I know the Bible don't say it, and I, and I ain't going to put it in there. But, you know, uh, 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 if he's tempted like we are, I'm sure if somebody beating us, we're going to say, huh, I'm going to beat you. Huh? And I can't say Jesus had that thought going through his mind. Because huh? the Bible don't say it. You follow me? But you know, being natural, you're going to have that kind of thought. But he resisted any evil. You follow me? Why? Because he was totally committed huh, to the will of God. You got to totally uh, be, 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 uh, resist evil because you're totally submitted to the will of God. Somebody say 100%. 100%. You got to be 100%. Huh? If you're not 100%, you're carnal minded. If you're 5%, you're carnal minded. If you're 2%, you're carnal minded. If you're 1%, you're carnal minded. If you're 9.991%, you're carnal minded. Huh? And that, and that, and that, that one infinite percent can take you out. We don't see it like that, but it'll take us out. Brother Quinn? And, and, and Bishop, uh, all through the book of Matthew and John and Luke, Jesus always went away to pray. Yeah. Before he did, just like uh, he, the, the word of God tells us, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. We have to always pray without ceasing. Yes. And Jesus was a perfect example. Praying without ceasing in this body. Yes. He prayed without ceasing. Yes. Chester, Chester, to keep keep the spirit of God within him. He yeah. worked Move it. the same way. Move it. Move it. Yeah. That's the change. You follow me? That's the change. People that don't pray, that's a problem. Because that's your main communication with God. Yes, sir. Some people, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, um, I talk to unbelievers and I talk to believers. <laughs> I'm sure you do too. That's funny to me about because of what I'm about to say. When I talk to unbelievers and uh, I hear their conversation, they don't pray. They don't know what prayer is. They don't understand the, the, the like you said, the, the workings of prayer. They don't understand the value of prayer. You know what I mean? Why? Because they're unbelievers. Now, 
It would be a shame for somebody to be in the body of Christ for, I'm going to say, two years and know nothing about prayer. That's a shame. And two years is generous because immediately when you get the Holy Ghost, you start praying. You want to know. You want to know what you got. Uh, you want to know how to use what you got. You want to, uh, uh, I, I say it this way. The Holy Ghost will activate in you and start praying. Huh? Yes, sir. It makes a difference. Yes, Lord. There's a difference. Y'all with me? So, so if one doesn't desire the things that are of God, then they're carnal minded. If you're desiring the things of God, then you're spiritual minded. Can't be both. Can't have both. And say you're spiritual. Y'all with me? All right. Thank you, Lord. Now, these are the things. Y'all don't be mad at me. But these are the things that God wants me to, to, to deal with you all about. Huh? You follow me? And myself. It's a two-edged sword. Don't get me wrong. You follow me? God says uh, we're, in, we're in a season now where people... Are, are having a form of godliness. But they're denying my power. They're denying my anointing. Meaning this, meaning this. That, that, that they, they, they're denying my anointing by living beneath their privileges. Not really knowing what they got. Not really uh, trying me. Uh, and, and, and leaning on me and seeking after me with all their heart. Yes, Lord. Hey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. one Lord. Love the Lord thy God with half your heart, with, all your heart. Uh, with half your soul, with, all your soul. Uh, with half your mind, and love the devil with the other half. Yes, the scripture don't say that. Yes, Isn't that foolish? How can I say I love God and love the devil at the same time? Can't do it. God is saying we are living beneath our privileges because we're not totally going after him the way he designed, the way we are designed to do. Amen? God says, God says it's the season now. Turn your heart back to me. It's the season now. Uh, turn your heart back to me. Uh, see what I open up a window of heaven and pour you out blessings that you don't have room enough to receive. Call on me and I'll be nigh thee even in thy mouth. Uh, uh, seek after me and you'll find me. Call me uh, and I'll be nigh thee. Uh, uh, y'all should be standing up on y'all head. <laughs> Why? Because God said, I'm turning my heart to you now. Huh? Huh? I'm, 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 I'm calling out for you. Huh? I'm calling out to you with a stretched out arm. Huh? I'm sending my word to heal you. I'm sending my word to deliver you. So you can count the cost. Hallelujah. So you, so, so you can be the head and not the tail. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. Y'all with me? But you got to let go of some stuff. That's the struggle. Got to let go of some stuff. Amen? Got to let go of some stuff. Huh? Got to let go of some stuff. Huh? Got to let go of some stuff. Got to let it go. Got to let it go. And I'm going to say some stuff. Let go of all stuff. That ain't like Jesus. Uh, let, let go of all desires that are not like him. Uh, let go of all wills that are not like him. Uh, if, if you got to do it in secret, you should do it. 
Huh? If you got to dip and dive, you shouldn't do it. Huh? If, if you got to hand some money over in secret, you shouldn't do it. In, in, in the sense of you making a deal. You follow me? You shouldn't do it. Huh? If you got to call somebody over and whisper in their ear and tell them gossip, you shouldn't do it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Huh? Shouldn't do it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Follow me? <laughs> I'm going to say it this way. <laughs> If you can't have a conversation on speakerphone, you shouldn't do it. <laughs> I'm just making an illustration. I know some things are private, but y'all understand what I'm saying. Thank you. Don't be sneaky. Amen? Don't be sneaky. What's your intent? What's your desire? Is your intent and desires godly or are they ungodly? Y'all with me? Yeah. Hallelujah. All right, that's what he means by a carnal mind. Carnal mind, because uh, like I said, we live in the flesh, right? Yes, and we have to uh, uh, do things in the flesh. Yes. Am I right? Yes. But when we live and do it, we got to do it holy and right. Yes. Amen? Yes. Y'all with me? Samson, he was anointed, wasn't he? Wasn't he anointed? Y'all know he was anointed. Samson was anointed. Chosen by God. Huh? Sanctified, set apart. He was a Nazarite. Amen? Took a vow. Couldn't cut his hair. Couldn't eat certain things. But Samson was carnal. And he paid for it, didn't he? Lost his sight. Was a disgrace to his family, his mother, his father. Samson never had a saved girlfriend. Oh, yeah, was unsaved girlfriends. Whole lot. Huh? Y'all with me? Anointed. But carnal. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't be anointed and carnal. You'll lose your sight. <laughs> Absolutely. Eventually your life. I like that. Huh? Now, Jacob, he started out carnal. Huh? Until he connected with the plan and the purpose of God. Then he got spiritual. Had a spiritual encounter with the angel. Said, I, I won't let you go until you bless me. Huh? He was carnal minded. Now he's turning spiritual minded. And God said, I'm going to make you a prince. <laughs> Made him a prince. Huh? Changed his name. Huh? Caused his enemies to be at peace with him. Anointed him. Huh? Blessed his family. Told him you're going to be the 12 tribes of Israel. And out of you is going to come a savior by the name uh, to uh, the tribe of Judah, huh? which came Jesus Christ. You follow me? He was carnal mind, slickster, did things his way. But when he stepped into the plan of God, well, I want to preach that one day. He stepped into the plan of God and it changed. When you step into the plan of God, your life changes. Huh? Your outlook changes. Yes, Lord. You make your steps count. Y'all yes, 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 with me? Yes. It makes a difference. Brother Gwen? You, you say when you step like that, your continent, your, your whole continent changes. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Lifestyle changes. Your, your, uh, the Bible says without a vision, the people perish. Yes, sir. That, that vision uh, relates to one's plans. Amen. If you don't have plans that are godly, you'll live any kind of way. You'll live without restraint. When you understand God's purpose and plan for you, which is spiritual minded, you'll live with a purpose. 
You choose God over uh, uh, Esau. He chose a bowl of soup. Huh? Samson chose Delilah over God. Carnal. You follow me? People that are spiritual, they don't do that. There was a woman in the Bible by the name of Anna. Huh? She, she, she lost her husband. And the Bible says that, that, that she didn't depart from the temple. She gave her life unto the Lord. Dedicated her life unto the Lord. Made a choice. Huh? Because it was God's plan that if she did that, she would see the consolation of God, which is Jesus Christ. <laughs> see what I'm saying? When you choose God, great things happen. When you don't choose God, bad things happen. Y'all with me? Yeah. Yeah. Who, who, who you going to choose? <laughs> All right, let's look here. And, and once again, I say this, that God is turning his heart to us. Yes, Lord. He's turning his heart to us. Yes, Lord. God is not upset and angry with us as we would think that he should be. He sends his word to help us. Now, if you don't take heed to this word, there's going to be some repercussions. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Do y'all believe that today? Yes, sir. I feel free. <laughs> I feel happy. Thank you, Lord. Why? Because I'm doing the will of God. Huh? I ain't got no attitude. I ain't angry with nobody. You feel me, Sister Louise? Oh, I'm talking like that guy. Uh, that we interviewed the other day. You feel me? <laughs> you understand where I'm coming from? Thank you, Lord. All right, let's look at the scripture. Thank you, Lord. We're going to get through this. Notice what he says. He says, For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Meaning that Jesus gained the victory for you uh, uh, in his flesh, right? In his flesh, he overcame for you. Now, notice that, ah, uh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Let's go over here to, uh, just hold that, uh, we're going back to Romans, but let's go over here to St. John, chapter number three. Y'all getting something out of this tonight? Chapter number three, and uh, drop down to Verse 18. Do you have a say amen? Notice what it says. Verse 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned. He that believeth on Jesus is not condemned. Don't have guilt. No, uh, free from the penalty and the power of sin. Why? Because you believe on Jesus. Notice what it says. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he uh, hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Notice. He's talking about a believer and an unbeliever. A believer believes on Jesus and walks therein. An unbeliever does not believe on Jesus and walks there out. You follow me? Go ahead. I have a question, Bishop. Uh-huh. What about the, um, the ones that have this form of godliness? Unbelievers. Unbelievers. Definitely. You either are, you got to be 100% in. Mm. If you're not 100% in, you're an unbeliever. I'll say that again. If you're not 100% in following him all the way, you are an unbeliever. An unbeliever. If you're not all the way in. I, I just sinned a little bit, Pastor. You're an unbeliever. 
Because there's no sin in Christ. You're not, you're not comfortable because notice what it says. There is therefore now no condemnation, no guilt or penalty for sin. And if you commit sin, live in sin, there's guilt and penalty. So ergo, uh, there is, uh, you are not in the body. That that says if you don't have his spirit, you're none of his. So you may say, well, wow, that's that's kind of that's kind of that's kind of rough. That's the way God is. That's the way it is. You should know the truth. Right. So therefore, if you know that, then you'll stop straddling the fence. If you believe that. When he comes, he's going to say, come my people. If you don't believe this, he's going to say, depart from me. Why? Ye worker, notice, worker, deeds, worker of iniquity. I never knew, we now never knew you. We were never in a relationship. I know I'm giving some meat out tonight. But y'all go home and cut it up in little pieces. So you can eat it. Put some gravy on it. <laughs> That'd be all right. Go ahead. When, when, if I struggle, Bishop, when you say have this mind that's also in Christ Jesus, when I pray about that, I'm still a believer, but I'm, uh, but, but I'm praying to have this mind within Christ Jesus. Yeah, that's being spiritual. Yes. See, yes. notice what he said. I'm struggling, but I'm praying to have this mind. That, that's, that's, that's what a believer does. Yes. It's a fighter, overcomer. Yes, but when am I not struggling? When I give in to it. Mm -hmm. Now I'm a sinner. Yes, sir. Now I'm a non-believer. Yes, Help us. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Because when, when, when I give in to my flesh, my evil desires, I make the word of God of none effect. Meaning this, that all that I know of Jesus, all that I heard of Jesus being a way maker, being my victory, being my peace, and, and yet I'm giving in to my flesh, huh? that, that's saying that I don't believe that. But if I'm struggling and I'm fighting and I'm, and I'm overcoming and I'm trusting God, that's saying I'm a believer. Mm. Yes, sir. Y'all see? See the difference? That's a believer. And, 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 and what, people, what people fail to understand is what God calls a believer is not what the world calls a believer. What the world calls a believer is, yeah, I believe that Jesus died, rose again, and the facts about him. That's not a believer. A believer is one that accepts and does the will of God. That's a believer. When you came in here tonight, you came in and sat in these chairs because you believed that they would hold you. You became a believer. Yes, sir. If you had any questions, you've been back there looking. Say, hey, I don't know. Uh, not getting into it. But, but, but you believe that those chairs would hold you, so you rested in it. Sat in it. Yes, sir. Without question. Yes, sir. That's a believer. Amen. You rest in Jesus without question. Y'all with me? There's a difference. Mother of Davis? The, the struggle is that you, you want to obey God, mm -hmm. but you're not there yet. You don't have the strength to do it. So that's why you pray to, to overcome. That's the fight. That's the war that you're in between the flesh and, and the spirit. Because when you, when you, when you have a, a, a struggle going on, you're resisting the devil. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're, you're trying to obey. Your desire is to obey God. Right. And that's, that's, that's what causes a struggle. You know, you're resisting. 
Yes. And, and what she's describing is your will is resisting the will of God. And it's not that you don't have the power. It's that you uh, don't have a strong enough desire. Because he gives you the power. But what stands in the way is your desire, your carnal mind. Because as soon as you surrender, all, all, all righteousness breaks loose. Follow me? When he gives you the Holy Ghost, he, he doesn't give it to you by uh, what I want to say. Uh, I know that's not doctrinally correct when I'm about to say it, but, but uh, I know he gives it to you in a human measure. Don't get me wrong. But when he gives it to you, he gives you everything you need. That's one dose. He don't, it's not a trickle down. It's activated when you surrender and release yourself to the Lord. When, when the scripture talks about a person being full of the Holy Ghost, that means that, that they are fully allowing the Holy Ghost to lead and guide them. Y'all with me? All day, every day. Let the Holy Ghost lead and guide you all day, every day. That's what it's there for. And, and the fight is with your will. Your desire. Carnal mindedness. Y'all with me? Yeah. All right. My God, this is good stuff. Notice, verse 19, it says, and this is the condemnation. Notice, that light is coming to the world. That word light there means spiritual knowledge. Spiritual enlightenment. Jesus, the revelation of Jesus has come into the world. And men what? Love darkness. Love carnal mindedness rather than what? Light. People that struggle with righteousness and holiness, they love evil more than they love righteousness. They love evil more than they love God. Follow me? When you choose evil over God, you're showing which one you love most. When you choose God over evil, you're showing which one you love most. And you're actually showing whether or not you're a believer or a non-believer. You're showing whether you're spiritual minded or carnal minded. A spiritual minded person will never choose carnality. A, car a carnal minded person will never choose spirituality. It's oil and vinegar. Black and white. When you read, when you read the book of Psalms, especially Psalms, uh, uh, it starts out with Psalms num uh, chapter number, uh, division number one. It says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seateth in the seat of the scorn. But his delight is where? In the law of the Lord, right? So that whole song sets the tone and the pace for all that books of, 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 of the book of Psalms, which is showing you the difference between uh, good and evil, right and wrong, spiritual and carnality. If we were to uh, 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 cut everything down to its bare essence, everything comes up to good and evil. Choosing good and evil. Book of Genesis, good and evil. You follow me? Jesus' fight and struggle, good and evil. Your fight and struggle, good and evil. You gotta choose the good over the evil. Yes, Lord. Y'all <laughs> with me? Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right, now notice what he says. And this is the condemnation that truth. Light, truth has come into the world. Men love false doctrines, darkness, 
rather than truth, Jesus. Because what? Their, their actions are evil. When, when you choose uh, 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 evil over good, your actions are evil. Am I right? So therefore, you're not a believer. Because believers choose the good. Pastor, you probably said, man, you're beating a dead horse. Why do you keep saying that? <laughs> Notice. But he that doeth truth cometh to Jesus. Cometh to the light. He that wants to walk in truth, they come to Jesus. That his deeds may be made manifest. That, 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 that I want to know uh, if I'm doing good or if I'm doing wrong. Notice. That and that his deeds may be manifest that, that they are wrought in God. That if he walks or she walks in the way of God, it shows that you are a friend of God. Y'all with me? All right, let's go back over to Romans. I got, I got, I got almost 20 minutes. No, how many more minutes? Almost 15. All right, I'm going to use all the 15 Romans chapter number 8. Y'all with me? Yes, sir. All right. Woo. Romans chapter number 8 and verse number 4. All right. Now notice that the righteousness of the law, Jesus died on that cross and he condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, who, who don't walk after a carnal way, but after what? The spirit. You got to walk in the spirit, in the anointing. Follow the leading of the Holy Ghost. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are of the spirit, the things that are of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is what? Death. But to be spiritually minded is what? Life and peace. Now notice the contrast there. Now, I want you to, I want you to get this in your mind. When it talks about they that mind, that word mind there means one's habit of thought. Your habit of thought. What is your habit of thought? What do you think on? Are you thinking on having evil desires or you're thinking on righteous desires? If you're thinking on both, then the Bible tells you to bring those thoughts into captivity uh, to the obedience of Christ. If you're thinking on evil desires and you're spiritually minded, you bring those evil desires into captivity, meaning that you change the, the thought of what you're thinking on to the obedience of Christ. You line it up with Christ. You with me? The Bible says, to he that is pure, what? All things are pure. Even his mind and his conscience is pure. If you're not thinking on pure things and your desire is not about good things, then you're going to be in trouble. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because this is what this means. It says that the thoughts uh, 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 deals with where you're placing your interests. Where is your interest? And God wants your interest 100% on him. If you don't keep your interest 100% on God, you're going to be carnal. Now, what do you mean, Pastor, when you say that? Saying this, we, we, we live in this world, don't we? Don't we? Don't we live in this world? All right, so then I have to live the way God has planned for me to live in this world. You follow? Yes. Now, what I mean by interest, 
Now, if, if my interest is to lie, steal, cheat, kill, then, then I'm carnal body. That's not God's interest. Am I right? Some people may say this. Well, well Pastor, how you going to be spiritual all the time? Huh? What, what he's saying is this. Is whatever you're doing, keep it pure. Keep it. I used to tell my children when they leave the house, keep it clean, keep it holy. Huh? Do, do, do what God would have you to do. Be clean, be holy. I can go play pool. Uh, but but as long as I'm playing pool, I ain't gambling, I ain't bet, I ain't cussing. You follow me? I'm keeping it holy. Uh, I can go to the movie, uh, but but what am I watching? You follow me? What what's my activity? Uh, am I am I am I taking this girl to the movie because I'm trying to plot up on something? Huh? You follow me? What's my motive? What's my action? You follow me? Am I, am I blessing Brother Grady? Huh? Am I blessing him so that he can be indebted to me so when I need something, I can go to him? And if he don't do it, I bring it in his face. What's my motive? What's my interest? That's, what, that's the difference between carnality and spirituality. Brother Quinn? I had to stop. Learning how to stop playing the lottery. <laughs> I had to learn how to stop. I had to learn to start buying tickets on tickets on job, tickets to rapid trip, rapid tickets. Yes. Because my interest in it was in making money for the family instead of mm. in, instead of li listening, and being obedient to God's word on how to make how how, how my finances should be. Yes. That's that, that's one of the one, one of those one of those one of those interests that 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 Christ doesn't like. Right. Um, um, I had to stop. I had to stop playing, playing, um, playing. How I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get money from the world, and, and 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 not looking at how Christ will look at finances. Absolutely, getting money in a worldly way, thinking that you're going to use it in a godly way. Isn't that a devil? Isn't that the devil? Isn't that deception? People think like that. Huh? I'm going to do this evil. But I'm going to turn around and bless them. That's Robin Hood mentality. Huh? Robin Hood wasn't saved. <laughs> they were Robin folk. Huh? Stealing from the rich, giving to the poor. Carnal mind. Huh? And, and notice the intent. Everything you do goes back to the intent. That determines spirituality. Uh, you have to live in this world. Uh, but what is your intent? Uh, is what you're doing lining up with righteousness? That's what God says. Am I, am I uh, raising my children the right way? Am I treating my husband, my wife, the right way? Am I working on the job the right way? Follow me? Am I dealing with people the right way? Am I dealing with my son? Am I dealing with God the right way? Uh, that's, that's the difference between spiritually uh, uh, minded and carnally minded. The mind, the thoughts. Brother Quinn? My, my mind, my motives can't be on Wall Street and try to buy me some marijuana stocks <laughs> or, or interests like that. Even though it's making money, the way the world make money, the way I look should look at money, and God's eyesight being righteous is two different things. That's true. We, if you're in the will of God, you got to seek first the kingdom and His righteousness. That's God's way. Amen. Y'all with me? Amen. Now notice, He says to be spiritually minded is what life and what. Let's, let's go there. Verse number six. To be carnally minded is what? Death. Death represents separation from God. That's what death is. Separation from God. If you 
are not walking in God's plans totally with your interest totally on him, it's going to bring about death. Notice then, if you're spiritually minded, 100% sold out to God, then it's going to bring about life and also peace, shalom. And that word peace there means provision. God is going to provide for you. He's going to make sure you have everything you need. Y'all with me? Because the carnal mind, verse number eight, because the carnal mind is enmity, what? Against God. A carnal minded person is God's enemy. I don't want to be the enemy of God. Christ died so that I don't have to be the enemy of God. Right? A carnal minded person is enmity with God for it is not subject to the what? To the law of God. Neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot what? Please God. You can't make God happy by being carnal minded. By being uh, uh, conniving, scheme, scheming. Can't please God. He that cometh to God must first believe that what? He is. You got to believe that God exists. Now notice. But to but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the Holy Ghost, the spirit, is in you. Now, if any man have not the Holy Ghost of Christ, he is what? Not he is. You don't belong to him if you don't have the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost brings in those good desires. Remember what it says? What the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh? Huh? The Holy Ghost gives you power huh? and, and, and makes your weak flesh strong. You follow? The Holy Ghost deals with you so that you can submit to the will of God. On your own, you can't submit to the will of God. If you could, you wouldn't need the Holy Ghost. Y'all with me? All right, I'm trying to hurry up here. I'm almost done. All right? Uh, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so, be that the Spirit dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised Jesus up from the dead dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall quicken or make alive your mortal body through the spirit that dwelleth in him. All right, come on, give God a praise. Thank you, Lord. I thank God for this Bible study on tonight. I hope it makes you think whether you're a believer or not a believer. I hope it makes you think about reprioritizing your life, turning your life over to Jesus, because the Lord wants you. The Lord wants you to turn your life over to him. The Lord says you're living under an open heaven. Thank you, Lord. And he wants to save you. He wants to deliver you. In fact, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, the kingdom of heaven is being preached throughout the world. And God is looking for a certain number. Amen. I want you to Join the body of Christ so the sooner you join, the sooner we can leave. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. So let us, let us, let us join uh, with the body of Christ. Uh, we thank God uh, for this uh, opportunity. And now we are going to the opportunity to give. Uh, those that are listening to me virtually, you have an opportunity to give too through Tidely. And we want you to uh, be tremendously blessed and let God use you to his glory. In Jesus' name, amen.